is the existence of public goods. Now, if the provision of public goods were left to the market alone, quite simply, those goods would not be supplied. And the reason the market is so unwilling to supply public goods lies in the characteristics of those goods themselves. Pure public goods have two characteristics, non-excludability and they're non-rivalrous in consumption. By contrast, a private good is characterized by excludability and it is rivalrous in consumption. Now, what does this mean? Well, this chocolate bar is a private good. And if I want to enjoy the benefits of eating it, then I have to be willing and able to pay for it at the market price. And if I'm not willing or able to pay for it at the market price, then I'm excluded from enjoying it. After all, the seller won't sell it to me if I can't afford to pay for it. Now, all private goods, from this chocolate bar, cool drinks, hair dryers, washing machines, fancy sports cars, they're all characterized by excludability. And this means that it's possible to exclude people from the benefits of enjoying them. By contrast, a public good is characterized by non-excludability. That means that once it's produced, it's impossible to stop anyone from using it. Just think about this traffic light for a second. The traffic light controls the flow of traffic by indicating to motorists when to stop and when to proceed. None of these motorists can be excluded from using the traffic light. Unlike the chocolate, which I had to pay for, none of these motorists can be made to pay individually for the using of this intersection. Now, it wouldn't be very practical or cost-effective to put people at every traffic light in the city trying to collect toll fees from every motorist that drove through them, especially if the traffic light's green. Another example of a public good is the defence force of a country, which provides protection to its citizens against foreign threats. The protection provided by the National Defence Force is available to everyone. Nobody can be excluded, irrespective of whether a person is prepared to pay for it or even wants protection. The second characteristic of public goods is that they're non-rivalrous in consumption. And that means that my consumption of a public good doesn't diminish the availability of it for anyone else. By contrast, a private good, like this chocolate here, is rivalrous in consumption. Once I've consumed it, it's not available for anyone else. In the case of a public good, like this traffic light, the consumption of it by one person doesn't reduce its availability for anyone else. Because one motorist has used a traffic light, there's still just as much available for a second motorist, a third, or a fourth, or a fifth. However, it is these very characteristics of public goods that they are non-excludable and non-rivalrous that leads to something ominously called the free rider problem. Since it is not possible to exclude a person from receiving the benefit of a public good, an incentive is created not to pay for that service at all. There will always be people that say to themselves, hey, even if I don't pay for it, I can still use it, so hey, hey, happy days. Now, what if we asked a private firm to supply our traffic lights? Now, that firm might calculate that it costs, say, a thousand rand per person per year to provide this service. The problem for the firm is how on earth do they get every citizen voluntarily to pay up to 1,000 rand a year? A private market is driven by voluntary exchange. The firm wouldn't be able to force people to pay. Some consumers would argue that they just can't afford it or they don't drive very much, or they take the train, or the bus, so the bus owner must pay. If the firm could find a way to charge, some consumers would actually change the way they travel to avoid paying. Eventually, the firm will go out of business, and the service it offered will no longer be supplied. Now that's where the government comes in, because only governments seem to have the power to coerce people to pay the necessary fees to finance the traffic lights. There is usually a very high demand for most of these goods and services. Society needs them to function. So if the market cannot or will not supply them, it's up to the public sector, the government, to provide. It's important to note, however, that not all the goods and services supplied by government are public goods. These are goods